Many thanks to my friend Norbert for sharing his thought-provoking insights that Messiah, son of Joseph, represents the Gentiles in general and the suffering they are slated to endure in the hell on earth the Kabbalists are manufacturing. Special thanks to Kelly for calling my attention to the release of tardigrades on the moon, which she points out are also known as moss piglets, CJB. The ancient Gnostics believed that an evil creator god whom they called Yaldabaoth, Yahweh, and Samo bungled the creation of our universe due to his ignorance of the divine realm and his malevolent nature. Instead of making a beautiful, true, good, loving, and holy world like the perfect kingdom of God, which he knew nothing of, Samael instead created a chaotic and evil material world of hell here on earth. Yaldabaoth trapped the human beings he created in this tortuous, dark prison to serve as his army of angels, where they remain in tormented material bodies, unless and until such time as they release the divine sparks of their souls, given to them by Samael's mother Sophia from the horrid prison of their material bodies, the corpse of flesh. Only those who obtain divine knowledge can escape the material realm of chaos and release the divine light of their holy souls, which then return to their source in heaven and reunite with God in his infinite kingdom of holy light. Human beings today are now acting much like Samo, the evil creator god of Gnostic myth. They want to become gods and create life themselves, as well as a new heavens and new earth, to be their own unique kingdom where they will reign. But, like Satan who inspires them, they do not know the divine plan or order of the Logos, which makes life holy and creation beautiful, true, good, and loving. These human would-be gods resemble Yaldabaoth, whose creation is a supposed catastrophe, not the demiurge of Plato or the Greek's Orphic god, Fane's protagonist, who is said to have created the universe out of his divine light and perfect love to be absolutely beautiful, good and true, while straining against the corrosive effects of chaos, which erode creation in the cosmic cycle, ultimately compelling a rebirth at the end which becomes a new beginning. Gnostic mythology holds that Samael, better known now as Satan, created man in the Garden of Eden, and Satan himself planted the tree of knowledge bearing its forbidden, unripe fruit. These ancient beliefs are modeled after the first book of the Torah, Genesis, which in Hebrew is called Bereshit, meaning in the beginning, the first word of the Torah. In 2019, Israel Aerospace Industries sent a lunar landing vehicle to the moon bearing thousands of minute organisms called tardigrades, or moss piglets, to be placed on the moon. Human DNA samples in a vast library were also on board Bereshit as part of the mission. The spacecraft crashed, but may have deposited its ominous cargo at least partially intact on the surface of the moon. It is as if Samael were intent upon creating a backup of the Earth and seeded the moon with human DNA, the new Adam and Eve, extremely hardy living organisms, the origins of a new ecosystem, and a comprehensive archive bursting with the ripened knowledge of mankind to bear the fruit and seeds of the new tree of knowledge planted in the new Garden of Eden on the moon. Daniel Oberhaus wrote in his article for Wired, a crashed Israeli lunar lander spilled tardigrades on the moon, which was published on August 5, 2019, to cover these events. Half a world away, Nova Spivak watched a live stream of Bereshit's mission control from a conference room in Los Angeles. As the founder of the Arch Mission Foundation, a nonprofit whose goal is to create a backup of planet Earth, Spivak had a lot at stake in the Bereshit mission. The spacecraft was carrying the Foundation's first lunar library, a DVD-sized archive containing 30 million pages of information, human DNA samples, and thousands of tardigrades, those microscopic water bears that can survive pretty much any environment, including space. But what if these moss piglets, or human DNA someday, by some hand or artificially intelligent robots, evolve or are transformed into new creatures miscreants who endure perpetual suffering for billions of years, knowing only torment and pain, the damned condemned to endure eternal agony? What sort of life can be expected to emerge from a garden of grotesque moss piglets? What right do our present-day demiurgical would-be creator gods have to toy with releasing the seeds of life into outer space or altering and re-engineering it here on Earth? What if the ultimate result of their misadventures is to create evil, 
demented, deformed, suffering, insane and tortured beings, demons who curse their creator and lament their existence. It is indeed a gamble to spill the seeds of the Logos, the Logoi Spermaticoi of Earth, onto the grainy sands of the moon or the legendary hell of the red planet Mars. What chimeras may someday emerge? What horrors might be born and last longer than the stars in eternal torment? It was the devil who first played God until man mimicked him seeking to create new planetary kingdoms and planting DNA, virtually indestructible organisms and trees of knowledge on the whirling children of the sun. The warning cries of ancient poets serve instead as a guidebook to potential disaster in self-fulfilling prophecies of doom and damnation. Is Samael being given a new breed of scapegoat so that the sinners be freed from the debts of their sins? Are a new race of the damned being manufactured to endure eternal torments in the place of their creators to free them from the burden of their sins? So too it is on earth where scapegoats are bred and slaughtered to bear the sins and punishments of the wicked in their evil place. One tribe in particular curses everyone else with nearly every angry and hateful breath that leaves their slanderous tongues. They regularly wish upon their scapegoats every form of pain and torment they can conjure up in the collected consciousness of their kind, spanning across malevolent millennia. With every twisted fiber of their taut and raging being, they seek to pass along the blame and punishment for their mad crimes onto every other race and escape blameless. These black magicians even have a holiday to mark the deed, Yom Kippur, the day on which they atone for their misdeeds against their satanic gods by passing off the blame for their sins onto the Gentiles with the gift of a single goat bearing them all, which they push off a cliff into Satan's mouth. But that is not enough. To be truly cleansed of their deserved guilt, the scapegoated Gentiles must suffer the worst torments, endure the harshest agony, be witness to the most obscene horrors, and then die a painful death and be damned forever. Only that will serve as the measured punishment for the unimaginable collective sins of the tribe which they place on the necks of the Gentiles. Insufficient suffering would not make equitable amends, so the suffering and horror has to be beyond bad and exceed the imaginable to counterbalance the incalculable sins of the tribalists. It is the nature of a predator that its prey suffer and die in its place as it feasts on the blood and cries of its victims. And in this they delight with the patient schadenfreude of a venomous spider who garbs his food in a sticky and concealing web. The Kabbalists are turning the earth into hell on purpose as part of their ancestors' plans to destroy and damn us with their God's curses meant for them. Few people realize that the apocalyptic Kabbalistic movies they crank out like their nuclear bombs are deliberate curses on humanity, excreting sympathetic magic to lure the destructive demons of their dark dreams to earth. They believe that they are themselves the gods of creation and can feed off of the energy of fear, suffering, bloodshed and death which they deliberately inflict upon humanity. We are their scapegoats and we are to bear the blame for all their sins, including those of harming us. The Kabbalists insist and use their grossly disproportionate power to ensure that we suffer the punishment for the crimes of the hurt they cause us in addition to all their other misdeeds in a spiraling cycle of ever escalating misery. In their view, this frees them from the burden of their sins and grants new flesh to their dry bones as we wither into non-being and damnation. So there is more in their purpose of destroying us than merely murdering us and exterminating our races. This hell they are crafting tortures and mutilates. We the scapegoats to unburden them of their sins. They deliberately generate the horrors of mental illness and broken families by feeding the Gentiles lies, wars, pornography, degeneracy, drugs, violence, toxins, poverty, hopelessness, and a million other curses which would not exist without their intervention. They intentionally inject poisons into foods and drugs, destroy the human genome with medical treatments, genetically altered foods, a sea of poisons, depleted uranium munitions, food additives, dyes, preservatives, and overprocessing. They deliberately cause cancers, deformities, infertility, wars between generations and nations, Invasions, not just to kill us, but to convert our reality into the halls of hell so that we suffer for their sins and thereby redeem them before their hellish gods and offer them the entertainment of our torment. They profit from this hell in every way as arms manufacturers, usurers, 
doctors, lawyers, journalists, commentators, etc. Now you know what they have planned for you. It can and must be stopped.